Hey everybody, I want to welcome you to Life with Gwen and Joe. I'm Joe, this is Gwen, and we're here for another exciting show. What are we going to talk about today, darling? Well, today's going to be just in line with the times. Everybody's being asked to either be quarantined or isolation or, or something along those lines. Our schedules are getting mixed up, so we're going to be talking about slowing down and the benefits of that. Life with God is so good. So come join us on this fun life where we put God in the center of everything. I'm sure that everyone is aware that we are dealing with this uh, coronavirus issue, the COVID-19 issue that is upon us. Our country is having to deal with uh, social distancing. I actually was trying to sit closer to Gwen and she didn't want me to sit closer to her. So I, I had to really talk her into letting me sit this close. So I, I have to be careful not to get up any closer than that. Okay, I got in trouble. But uh, it, it's, it's a serious issue. And there's been a lot of confusion, a lot of fear, a lot of what I feel disinformation being put out there online and, in the, and on the airwaves. And uh, so let's talk about some of the things that are going on. They're, they're asking us to stay home. They're asking us to social distance. And that seems a little bit strange and, and people um, are kind of confused about what to do. So. Right, oh, this is very, very new. I mean, we're in a free country and for someone to tell us to stay in our houses, uh, it's almost kind of like going to prison for a lot of people, <laughs> you know, that you can't get out and, and there's less than 10 people at, at a function. And I think people are handling it pretty well, but I do get very, very concerned about some people that have isolated themselves maybe to a fault. And, uh, you know, the Bible talks about that. Yes, it does talk read about that, read that. that. That's interesting that there was even a scripture to... It talks about isolation, right? Right there, Proverbs 18. Right, Proverbs 18, 1, uh, it says, Whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. And, of course, that's about talking about somebody separating themselves out in society and maybe living that way. But um, I understand the principle in that the Jewish people had where they would get you if you were sick to quarantine yourself outside the camp for seven days. The priest would look to see if the infections were gone and if they were uh, not gone you went another seven days. So 14 days out which is very biblical for people to, to be outside the camp. But the difference is they didn't ask everybody inside the camp to uh, stop work or whatever. I mean they just tried to isolate right. out people with the condition and uh, and I felt like maybe a, a great thing that would have been been helpful would be take those that are most affected by it. Statistically is that this has been something that has hit people that were already had maybe pre-existing conditions and especially for elderly. So maybe that those people staying home, let the young people go bring them food and help them and that type thing. And In this downtime when we're at home and when we're kind of uh, not carrying on with our normal lives, uh, it would be a shame, and w you put this out in a tweet today, it would be a shame to not use this time constructively to, to think about your place with God, your place with your family, and things like that. Seeking a relationship with God right now, wouldn't it be sad if we, you look back on this in life and, and we were quarantined for several weeks and you were not closer to God at the end of it? I mean, here you've got some time. I mean, I know today even uh, because the time was not quite as rushed, Joe and I had the time to like get down on our knees on the side of the bed and pray. And, and I it just, oh, I just love that. Yes. I love God seeing, the heavens seeing that we're willing to bend our knees and reach out to Him. And I love your prayers. And I love your prayers because you're never in a rush. I mean, when you're talking to God, it's like, there's nothing in the world that you're anxious about. You know, you get everything in your heart out. It's beautiful. I love the way you pray. Well, um, when you're talking to God is the wrong time to, to um, you know, rush through things. And, and you, that's about the most serious conversation you could have in your life is when you're talking to your maker. So what I think that God's trying to get us to do is be patient, slow down. And uh, I think that that's got to be one of the lessons that he's doing for this country right now. So, Okay, uh, it says in Psalms 46.10, Be still and know that I am God. 
I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Beautiful. Here's another one that's talking about being still. Psalms 37, 7. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Let's and see. That's what we're having to do, isn't it? Absolutely. We're waiting for th this to lift and um, for good news. Luke 12, consider how the lilies grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. So a lot of people are without jobs right now. The job um, unemployment rate went as high as it's just about ever been. The last time it was like this in the 1980s. And that was because the economy was bad. This is just because they're telling you to go home. And, and, and don't open your doors. I'm telling you, the minute the doors are open, it's going to be a rebound, a boomerang, boom. <laughs> oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to snap back like I don't think anything in history. In James 5, 7 through 8, it says, Be patient, then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, and how patient he is for the autumn and the spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Mm -hmm. And that scripture gives me the chills. I love mm -hmm. that. I love that scripture. So being patient. Yeah. The fruits of the spirit, <clears throat> love, joy, peace, patience. I mean, all of these anxieties that build up inside people. Uh, I would imagine that you're seeing people uh, worried and angry and um, all kind of emotions going on, but now is the time. You're at home with your family and your children for them to remember all of this as one of their favorite times of their life that they got to be with their parents that much and and uh, just very, very beautiful. So uh, practicing all the fruits of the Spirit with your children, but also your spouse. What a beautiful time to like have, have no anger and to have nothing but beautiful words and positive words and, and uplifting one another. Use this time productively and efficiently to do exactly what you were talking about. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Well, it's not putting anything down. There's all no. the emotions in the world. And there's, you know, all of the, all of the, you know, every, everybody uh, doesn't, you don't need to feel guilty that there's, you know, some anxiousness about uh, maybe what's up ahead, but you give it to God. I mean, all Amen. these emotions that God's given us to, as a human, but at the same time, and, and, then, and then to know that in life, God has everything, what's left out? I mean, everything. I mean, war and peace and um, naming it, you know, mourning and then happiness, dancing, joy. And so it's, it's beautiful that God knows that we're going to experience every one of these and there's a time for it. Now we've got this time. Let's use it. Absolutely. The, let's use it for our children, our, our wives, our, our spouses and then our relationship with God. And I also think maybe not focusing on the big picture so much. It says in the Bible that, that we shouldn't be too worried about things. Let today's worries be sufficient for the day. So kind of compartmentalize things and, and just think about what you need to do in the moment. Stay in the moment throughout these days uh, and, and uh, take care of business in the moment and things that you have to do. Okay, well there's a lot of things that the family could be doing right now and um, that that, that right. we, we're watching all these families we're, we're caught we've been calling around and saying what have y'all been doing with your time there's so many different things we could be doing uh, family bible reading 
family dinners. Uh, We've done quite a bit of that. Oh yeah, and we're gonna probably do another one tonight, right? Yeah. Oh boy. I hope. And uh, family game nights, baking for others, cleaning out closets and giving clothes to others, mm -hmm. helping parents around the house, oh, yeah. online and virtual music and art lessons, homeschool, college classes online. Practicing scripture recitations, food delivery to those in need, and shopping for the elderly. Uh, those of you with animals, you can spend time with your animals, walk your dog, and you can do your yard work, keeping your yard and your house looking nice, swinging at the park with your kids. I'm a big kid, so I actually love to swing, but uh, bicycle rides, art, painting, jewelry making, Legos, trampoline, Marco Polo or FaceTime. Oh, using your phones oh, yeah. is an amazing thing. You can put the screen up and there's several of your friends and all talking to each other. I mean, this is a complete riot and very fun so that you can meet with a lot of people from around the world, if that's the case. Using this time to get closer to others, loving on each other and uplifting one another. Be patient out there. I know this is wild, and I know that a lot of people have questions between how far can the government go, how far reaching can they go between trying to like protect the health, but in the meantime, if there's no jobs, then you can't feed your children, or you can't, you know, uh, you can't pay the bills. I mean, th that makes people sick. Sometimes isolation and people already having uh, some depression. Uh, can get even worse. Staying at home is a whole new experiment of which I don't even know how far reaching that will go. So I pray with me, join yeah. Joe and I in praying that it will lift, that this will lift from this country so that we can get back right. to what we know that God made us to do, and that is to get to work. Absolutely. You know, even, even President Trump uh, said that the byproduct of, of shutting down the jobs and, and which will shut down our economy, the byproduct of that could be more far reaching than the virus situation itself. So it's going to be an interesting scenario and to see what, what, what the outcome is with all this stuff. You know, another thing I'd just like to say before we go is I grew up, I was born and raised on the West Coast. I, I lived in Los Angeles for almost three decades and you, you get caught up in the fast pace of everything, the pentameter and pace that people live at out, out, out there uh, in the big city is not conducive, I think, to, 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 to good spiritual health or, or just doing some of the things that we're talking about now, which is slowing your life down. I loved it when I came out. It actually took me some time to get used to being in the South because things are much slower here. This scenario has even slowed it down a little bit more. and. I actually kind of like it. We Thanks. want to thank you guys. Gwen and I, we love you. We want to thank you for, for being with us today. Um, we're praying for you guys. We will get through this and and we'll come out on the backside of this stronger than we ever been. So, so I'm just really looking forward to that. And uh, we love you all. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you next time. I'll keep shining my light, shining my light. Every day is the same, heading straight for the grave. <laughs> a little quarantine, a little isolation. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell so you are notified when we have a new video. Black leaves die, one day you'll be lighter. Dad, I say, give me reasons, you're a thriver in dark seasons.